A couple of things uh, going forward here. I want to make sure I bring to your attention that uh, the Child Evangelism Fellowship is having a Christmas dinner and concert Friday, December 1 at the Independent Bible Church at 2306 Hedgesville Road. They'll have dinner at 6, followed by a concert, and then Sings My Soul will perform too. There's no cost, but a free will offering will be taken, and the proceeds benefit the general fund of the uh, church too. You can uh, get more at uh, 304-839-2288 or cefwvep.org to reserve your seat. In studio with the uh, man named, known as Eddie Gokenauer here. He is in the Berkeley County Commission. He is, uh, I guess, vice president at this time uh, as well and uh, retired emergency services firefighter. He and Mr. Gilstrap have a lot in common, and they were just discussing antique fire trucks during the break here too. Ed, how many do you have? Uh, there's currently six. Six? Uh, yeah. That's a good collection. It is. It's it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, I I love them all. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. And uh, you know they they all have they all have their little quirks. They all have their their bit of history. Uh, several of them, uh, both my son and I operated, and uh, it just they're they're really cool. And uh, you know, recently back in the summer. I invited a bunch of retirees and and the uh, active guys uh, to the park for uh, coffee and donuts, and it was just really nice to be able to sit back and watch it unfold because I, I could watch and, and hear some of the older guys telling the younger guys the stories about you know different fires that that, that they pumped or you know like the aerial was used on and all these different uh, neat things uh, about the apparatus. So. It's it in my in my family my family just we just we ride them every chance we get. Yeah. My, I got granddaughters. Matter of fact, I, actually my granddaughters the other day uh, drove uh, one of the trucks. I, of course, I'm helping them, but but they drove. And uh, my daughter uh, she she just took one out on the on our uh, subdivision the other day for the first time ever. So uh, yeah, keep them going, you know. Now you have them. You have them in various parades. I know you do the Inwood and you do the uh, yeah. The uh, this year, do you rotate them? That you the ones you put out? Uh, well, it's it's kind of like uh, whichever one. Just you you walk in there and you look around yeah. and think, I haven't had this one out for a while, so let's take this one. And uh, unfortunately, we were not able to make the Veterans Day parade this year because I have a forty-four Mac. That's a wartime truck. There's no chrome on it, and I really like taking that to that particular parade. But uh, this week was just really, really busy with other stuff going on in the community and uh, and uh, granddaughter's birthday party. So yeah. it's all good. On the doors, do you preserve the original markings of the original fire department where it came from? Yes, sir. Uh, as a matter of fact, the the ladder truck that we we just purchased uh, originally it was a Martinsburg truck. We sold it to Shepherdstown. Uh, Shepherdstown had their markings on the door. I was able to get it to one of their parades uh, during the summer, I think it's the 4th of July parade, and uh, uh, Lieutenant uh, Brad Canarium, he and I were partners on this one, and I, I like it because I got somebody else, a younger person involved. Uh, so I had to take those markings off and put the Bureau of Fire of Martinsburg, West Virginia back on. Yeah. Where do you get service for those trucks, Ed? Well, uh, a lot of it I do it myself, um, and I've got some very good friends uh, that – have an extreme amount of knowledge. Uh, Dave Klein, a friend of mine, uh, owns D and D Truck Repair in uh, Hagerstown. He is an antique truck enthusiast. I got I got buddies all over the place. That it, it's amazing the the knowledge that's out there. I mean, a lot of time all you have to do is ask. When was the most recent truck you added to your collection? How long ago? Uh, back back in the summer, it was probably uh, June. Yeah, and I had no intentions on buying another one. I was in a warehouse up in Schuylkill, Pennsylvania. And there's probably a hundred fire apparatus in this building, and I'm just looking through ooh and ah and over old trucks. and And I told the guy with me, I said, I said, I'm gonna go back in this area. It was really dark. I had to actually use my phone to see where I was going. I said, as I approached, I said, man, I said we used to have a truck like that. And I got beside it. I said, oh my lands. I said, that's a, that's our old ladder truck. So a couple of phone calls later, it's it's heading to West Virginia. So. How could you tell it was one that you owned? What was the characteristic market? Well, you know, when you when you operate something and you clean something yeah. uh, daily, uh, there's a there's a relationship. Uh, you know, John probably <laughs> understands yeah. it, but but the, truly, when when I when I got to the side of the door, I saw the marking of Shepherdstown on the door. Sure. Then I knew it was obviously ours. Mm -hmm. But 
Straight bed or tiller? No, it's straight. It's okay. straight truck. Yeah. And that means what to the person who knows no idea what <laughs> you're tiller, talking about? I asked one of those questions <laughs> today. I, mean, I made the, a mistake. The straight bed truck is just, it, it's got however many wheels it's got with and with just one articulating part. Uh, the, the tiller has the guy that sits on the back end and steers the opposite way. Mm -hmm. I have, I almost call, caused a lot of damage. I, I, I rode tiller one time and then I was forbidden to ever <laughs> get back into, that, into the tiller again. It take, you got to look at the world differently when you're steering from back there. I'm sure. What do you have to do opposite? <clears throat> yeah, if you think you're going, it, it's, it's for tight quarters. So if the truck is, is turning to the left, the tiller has to turn to the right because you gotta swing the back end until you get to a certain point and and that's where i lost it because if you keep going you can kind of go up and say hi to the driver <laughs> <laughs> yeah. does, your, knife, yeah. does your turn have to match the guy in the the front in other words both of you turn at five degrees at the same time or how does that work you actually you have to concentrate on don't worry about what the driver is doing drive the tail end of the oh, truck okay. that's the secret okay. and and i i was not good at it that at all <laughs> bill knows how to park ships he yeah. does <laughs> yeah. bad idea captain bad idea <laughs> yeah uh so ed I, I know one of the things that you want to make sure is accomplished in berkeley county is the ability to have uh, at least some form of home rule so that you can generate revenue for the fire departments and the police departments uh the fire departments uh really i, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see how many across the state go to paid firefighters but especially in growing areas that's going to have to be the trend i would guess it will, and uh, you know, it, it it does not need to be total. You know, there, there still needs to be involvement. You know, we still want the volunteer fire departments to exist. We want them to be, uh, we want them to be healthy. You know, we want them to respond. We need them to respond. And um, but at, at two or three o'clock in the morning is, you know, those wee hours in the morning is when when the county really struggles, and and really and truly, a lot of it comes down to the call volumes, the demands that are being placed on them. It's unfair for them to. Uh, expect be expected uh, to run that volume of call uh, for free so uh, I I've always believed that that the public deserves an immediate response and it needs to be supplemented uh, along with the career, uh, with the volunteer service what's your ratio right now of paid to volunteer oh I don't know I mean and when you look at you know there's a lot of these departments they have you know 50 55 people on the rolls uh, some of them are lucky if they have six or eight that are really active. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. How six that... or eight volunteers that are really active? Yes, sir. Um, are there fewer people who are volunteering to do this kind of work now? There, there are. And, uh, you know, and it's just not here. It's all across the whole country. You know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trend that's going across the whole country. Do we have paid staff in all five of the volunteer companies? Yes, sir. Uh, 12 hours a day. 12 hours a day. Five days a week. Um, uh, Becker Heights is the only station. It's currently 24-7. And, uh, you know, Hedgesville seems to uh, be struggling the most right now. And, and they all they all kind of take their turns, you know. And, and then there's those times that, that they'll get an immediate response uh, and, and, and do a tremendous job. So it's – but it's that time when they can't. And uh, – that's that's what's the troubling part and um we're trying to fix that shifting to regional jail uh i know the legislators are acutely conscious of the escalating cost to regional jail and they've taken some action what is our current regional jail cost do you know yes sir uh we had 3.5 million dollars budgeted this year and we're running just slightly under under our budget numbers uh, but it's because of the programs that we've instituted. Yeah, we, we've we been very aggressive, we in the Berkeley County and a couple of other counties, but not throughout the state, of instituting the uh, uh, cost-saving procedures. Uh, and uh, we're getting lip service from the legislators for what we've done. Are we getting the monetary benefit as well? Well, we are. Uh, and and the <laughs> they, came out, they came out with this formula this year, and... I, I sat there at the house and I read the, I read it and I'm like, man, I don't even understand this. I, I do not understand. So I called Summer and I'm like, can you explain this to me? And she's like, uh, it's very complicated. I said, yes, I agree. But the calculations that we were told, it should save us about a half a million dollars. We're hoping that that's the case. Uh, and they've got different triggers in it. You know, it's very hard for me to, it, it's not a true black and white. It's, there's a lot of gray in 
in my opinion, of how this calculation exists. I want to go back to the fire stuff. Um, I live very close to the uh, Jefferson um, Berkeley County line along the river. And you can't really be farther away from, from a fire station. So by the time the fire trucks get there, we you know the, the fire will do what it's going to do. But now we've got a water problem because you've got to establish all tanker operations out there. Have there been any discussions of installing like water tanks, the you know petticoat junction elevated water tanks to to provide any Not, something that simulates a at, at least as a place to f fill the tanks? Well, there there are some uh, dry hydrants uh, in your area. Uh, Shepherd's Cove in particular has a dry hydrant uh, that's that can be used there. Um, and what do we mean by dry hydrant? Well, there, there's a body of water, uh, uh, whether it be a pond, a lake, uh, sometimes a stream that, that hard pipe is put in where a, a pumper can go and draft water out from that particular source. Um, but nothing, nothing in your area that's really substantial mm -hmm. other, other than that dry hydrant at uh, Shepherd's Cove. Um, Edit before we go, uh, John. This point has been raised in times past. Have we found an incident, at least in recent past, that we've been un unable to provide adequate water? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. And you know, there is there's now a, a more aggressive uh, dispatch, like in particular on structure fires, uh, you know, where you live. You're going to get Shepherdstown as well uh, as uh, Beddington, probably Hedgesville, Becker Heights, and Shepherdstown will be your response to that to that area uh, they have a very good mutual aid program uh, set up where they can pull the resources that they need you know the biggest thing John truthfully is we need to be able to get uh, people in the seats and get these trucks yeah. out the door that's what we really need that we can get the water there yeah okay Eddie Cook and our our guest here on the program vice president of the Berkeley County Commission Eddie, there's a question on our Facebook page and, and one that uh, I was going to ask you uh, uh, regardless, and that has to do with the lobbyist contract and the county commission. It'll be a, uh, another uh, couple of months here before we go into legislative session. Will you be paying once again for a lobbying firm to go to Charleston for you? We, we are. Uh, we we had initiated a contract with uh, Access Strategies. Uh, it, it was a vote that the two previous years I was a no vote on because I just felt that the amount of money that was being spent, was, it was just too much. Um, I can tell you that over the last year, I have personally uh, experienced, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the opportunities, had it not been for them, the jail bill in particular, uh, that's $500,000 savings that, w that, were, uh, that we should be uh, beneficial to the county uh, alone, just that alone. And uh, let me interrupt very quickly. It's my understanding that bill was dead was. until you, the lobbyist got involved with it and then gave it new life and it passed. It was. Uh, you know, I, I speak uh, often, you know, with uh, uh, Delegate Height and, and Delegate Hardy uh, throughout the session, and Mike had actually sent me a text, the jail bill is dead. Uh, and so I forwarded that message to uh, Summer, and she says, we're still working, you know. So that that bill alone, right there, uh, more than covers their cost. Uh, let alone the other thing, you know. They they work really hard on a fire and EMS bill uh, that will bring more dollars back into the volunteer fire departments, and that's that's a bill that we supported uh, wholeheartedly to be able to get additional funding from our dollars that we're already seeing down there because that's that's coming off of the premium insurance tax. So those dollars will be coming back into Berkeley County alone. Um, it's not so much, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've had people approach me and, you know, and challenge me on this. Um, but the thing about it is it's not because they said, look, you should be down there. Well, I can't be down there for 60 days. And the way things change, you know, we will get down there several times uh, throughout the year uh, and, and during the session. And we're, we, we do have contacts, but it's the other 54 counties that we need that communication with those are the ones that are going to be voting on it they're the ones that need to be persuaded and educated on the needs of that particular bill uh, you know it's unfortunate that this state has one brush that it 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 swipes the whole state with one set of rules or one set of laws 
they don't work for us. So we need them there to explain our situation and try to work on our behalf. And they do a tremendous job. Bill, before you go, Bill, okay. mm -hmm. all right, just hold on a second mm -hmm. there, because Ken Matson is the most vocal critic of this lobbying contract, and I be, believe he did a presentation to the county commission he did. opposed to this contract as well. I'm going to read you a few of his points and questions on our Facebook page. And in response to what you were saying, Eddie, about uh, the lobbyist, he said, you mean you didn't do your job, nor did the legislators, which is lobbying in behalf of, of Berkeley County citizens as an elected official. How do you know it was dead or appeared to be to help the lobbyists? So Mike and Mike could not get the votes. I assume that means Mike Height and Mike Hornby. Uh, there's five of you, meaning commissioners, and there's also the delegates and senators. And then finally, then pay them. Uh, I, that, and he's kind of messed up his sentencing here. Then pay them the your and a delegate salary not to exceed $80,000. Okay, I see what he's saying. Then don't pay the lobbyist more than what a county commission or delegate would make, which combined is a little under $80,000. Eddie, and what is the contract calling for going forward? Uh, it was $216,000. Two sixteen. dollars Yeah, plus expenses. Is that per year? Yes, sir. Okay, how many years did you renew for? Uh, I think it's three years, well, the, uh, one year at a time. I think that's what it is. Three years, one year at a time. Okay. Yeah. And it's, you're, it's the same as the original contract. Your, your response to Ken's points, who feels well, really mean, that the legislators you know, I've, and the I've discussed this with John. You know, uh, he came before us and, you know, gave a, a compelling argument. And, John who? Uh, you mean Ken? I'm sorry, yes. Ken, yes, okay, Ken, yeah. Ken Manson. And, uh, you know, I told John, or I'm sorry, Ken, yeah. I said, I will, I will call you, and I did. You know, I, I spoke with him for probably 45 minutes or so. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anything I can say to uh, convince Ken otherwise. That's your opinion, sir, and that's it. And uh, we, we move on to something else. I mean, uh, you can beat that horse all day long if you so wish, but the truth is we're getting results. Uh, you know, I saw $25 million uh, nearly disappear. Uh, that was for water infrastructure that we, uh, previous councilman, uh, President Doug Copenhaver, and Dan went and worked hard for. I went the next year uh, and, and tried to uh, keep it alive and th those monies were being lost. <clears throat> and uh, we had Summer with us, and Summer was able to uh, work her channels and, and get the money back on the table. So he and I are just going to have a difference of opinion of that particular decision. Are there others who contact you in regard to, to the, the paying the lobbyists, Eddie? Was there it, there have. Like, what, there, passion? I haven't had any, uh, you know, Ken's probably been the most vocal. And, and that's fine. You know, I, I enjoy... I enjoy speaking with other people that have different opinions, you know, because it, it allows me to make a better decision. Uh, and some of the things that John, or I'm sorry, that Ken talked about, I, I don't disagree with. Uh, but, you know, uh, we cannot be there. It, you know, it's during our budget uh, cycle. Uh, there, there's so many things that are going on uh, during that particular time. It's so difficult to get to the legislative uh, process. What will be your priorities in this next legislative session as regards in regards to the lobbying firm? Yeah, there's uh, there's like five different ones. You know, the the one the the home rule or or the one cent sales tax is huge. The property uh, rollback uh, is huge. Uh, we're we're pushing to to get a homestead exemption raised uh, for our folks. And that currently it's a statewide number is twenty thousand dollars with twenty thousand uh, dollars in in Berkeley County compared to uh, McDowell County. It's there's there's no uh, there's no equity there. So uh, you know we're we're trying to we're trying to do things that are going to help the public uh, in the long run. You mentioned five. You mentioned three. You listed five and you gave three. Are there another two? Yeah, there probably are. Okay. I know there are, but. Whatever yeah, that picking up on kind of that question, uh, annually uh, before the session, you meet with all of our legislators. Uh, initially, that included all the the three counties, Morgan, uh, Berkeley, and Jefferson. Do you still meet in tandem with the other two counties with the legislators? Well, uh, this year, uh, actually, Morgan County is going to meet with us as well. Okay. Yeah. But Jefferson has not the last couple of so years. They have so. not, uh, you know. I'm certainly not opposed to it, you know, but but once again, uh, we do have different issues. Uh, but you have a lot of common issues we do. as well. We do, and and we've supported one another on various issues uh, along the way. And um, you know, 
I'm not sure really what's going on with them right now. I don't yeah, think you I can meet with Jefferson yeah. County Commission yeah. right now. Yeah. You're probably struggling not, yeah. a little bit. But I was talking about in more normal times. <laughs> this is not normal. Yeah, we, we have more in common yeah. than we have yeah. Uh, yeah. also, that's for sure. And I felt initially that it gave you a lot more muscle, uh, the three counties in lockstep. You're right, there's differences, but if you look hard, there's a lot of communality. There are, three absolutely. Counties. Do other counties have lobbyists working for them as well? I think uh, there there are a couple counties. I think it's maybe Hup, uh, Upshur, uh, perhaps, or Putnam. I have a lobbyist, and I'm not sure about uh, Cabell. Yeah. Uh, one of the pushbacks against Summer and her group is that the County Commission Association, Association County Commission Association, also the Commission of Counties, are both lobbying functions. But the difference is they lobby for all 55 counties and not just one. Yeah, and there's times that the County Commission Association, uh, they're not on, they're not in board, they're not in step with Berkeley County. Yeah. You know, we're, there's lots of things that we're doing that the rest of the state has no interest in or need for. Uh, so therefore, it's not something they're going to uh, go out and work and fight for us. Where, you know, uh, where Summer and Dan Hall, uh, you know, that's that's our working group right there. Delegate Hurst says he's introducing legislation to make homestead exemptions uh, now up to fifty thousand dollars. Fantastic. Not sure what kind of traction he'll get, but that'll be a good bill to introduce and get some discussion going on, Mr. Gilstrap. Thank you, sir. I just, I I think it makes so much sense to have on the on the lobbyist issue um absolute value of the dollars i can't speak to i don't know but to to have essentially an ombudsman who goes and explains issues from sort of a as, a, as opposed to the delegates themselves talking among themselves to have a third party come in and explain how this will benefit you it's, this is not just a eastern panhandle thing this is something that will will, will it's a tie that will raise all boats. And, and to get that kind of buy-in from somebody who's talented at doing that, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Well, it's just like last year on the a, on a jail bill, uh, John. Um, you know, I, I've got, you know, built some relationships across the state. And uh, Lance Wheeler, uh, commissioner in uh, Kanawha County, uh, he and I, we, we talk uh, several times, uh, at, at probably once a month, somewhere out there about. But they were against this jail bill. And, and I'm like, look. I, you know, I'd already spoke to Summer, and I said, how is this going to affect Kanawha? And she said, it should save them about $800,000. I'm like, Lance, are you aware of, of what this bill can do for you? And uh, so, so therefore, we, I was able to get information from her that I was able to share with him, and then they come out and, and support, support the bill. So it's, it's all about communication, and uh, they're, they're very good at communicating. I mean— uh, they know the people to go to. Uh, they can get in, in places. They can get indoors that maybe I can't or it may take me weeks to get a meeting. They can get a meeting within an hour. Eddie, any final thoughts or any other things you want to get across to our listeners? No, I, you know, I tell you, the, the commission's working hard. Uh, you know, there's so much going on in this county. And, um, you know, right now we have a water, a water crisis. And I, w I would ask everybody out there that if you can conserve, if you're on public water, Please conserve uh, everywhere that you can. It will help us all in the long run. We're back to the water crisis again. We are. Yeah. How severe is it? It's, 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 it's severe, yeah. Are you close to issuing a suspension order of uh, use of water for other than mandatory things? Uh, we won't be. Uh, that will come from the district. Uh, but I think that it may be on their agenda uh, tonight, and I'll know more about that at 5 o'clock this evening. Maybe time to get Jim Ouellette back in here. Right. Eddie, thank you very much. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie.